Alrighty, welcome back guys to another tutorial. Today we're going to be messing around with the Happy Toolbox, which is a 3D platform that I just got access to. Um, so I have access to all of these 3D models and there's a couple that stood out to me, specifically this one right here, this desk fan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download a couple different models and we're just going to create some fun renders. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hop right into it. So let me go ahead and download this pack right here. And let's go ahead and download that. Now it should download as FBX. And as soon as it's done downloading, we're going to open up Blender and just import everything. I'm going to open up my downloads folder here so that we can get right into it. Um, for those of you who missed it last time, didn't go over this in a tutorial, but this is one of my last renders that I did with uh, Pokemon Pokeball that I had modeled. Now, as you can see, we have some really detailed um, spots on here. Like a lot of people were pointing out this fingerprint spot. So uh, that was something cool. We'll go over more stuff like that in future tutorials. I've just been super busy with my new job. All right, let's go ahead and open up this folder and unzip the files. FBX, we'll do high poly, of course, and then we'll go ahead and find the fan file, which is going to be called desk fan. I'm just going to pop that right into my downloads folder so I can easily import it into Blender. File import FBX, go to my downloads, and it should be right here. Let's go ahead and wait for that to import. And as you guys can see, here is our 3D model. It looks awesome. I'm super excited to get into this. Um, it should be separated by parts. It is fantastic. Um, and then if you look, the geometry is really nice on this. So again, I was expecting this because this looked like a high quality uh, platform, this happy toolbox. And as you can see, the geometry looks fantastic as we zoom in here. So super excited to get into this render. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start by popping into camera view quickly save my file. I'm gonna just start by setting up my camera. As we can see, the fan is already on the ground. I'm gonna add a quick plane underneath of it so I can kind of get a frame of reference as to where we're at. I'm gonna probably go for a higher angle here and I think I'm gonna choose orthographic because I really just genuinely enjoy an orthographic view. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more on our subject here. Kind of use my G shortcut to make sure that we are in the right frame. And I kind of like this angle. I'm also going to take my plane, hop into edit mode. I'm going to select this edge, extrude it up. E, Z is going to be the shortcut. And then I'm going to select this edge and just hold control B to bevel. And then I'm going to scroll to add kind of a nice little backdrop here. I think that looks pretty good. We'll hop out of edit mode using tab and we'll just shade that smooth. Now, I'm going to be using cycles for this render, so I'm going to start by just taking our background and pivoting it a little bit. So again, we have this orthographic perspective here. Let's go into rendered view to see what we have so far. So this is what we have so far. I'm going to be using an HDRI. Again, I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm just going from, from scratch, like completely from scratch here. So I'm going to hop into my Blender folder, go to my HDRIs, and I recently had this one, which was pretty cool. This is a good one. I think I'm gonna go with something a little bit different. Maybe this guy right here. All right, let's see what this looks like right now. Okay, so for our plane, I think I'm just gonna give this a new material. I'm just gonna raise that metallic and kind of lower that roughness a little bit, just for right now. I'm gonna click on my camera. I am going to up this value, this pass part out value. That's gonna allow us to just narrow in on our scene. That way we can easily tell what's going on and what we're working with. That way I'm not distracted by the external elements, which I don't like. All right, let's start off by kind of giving this a few materials before we get into some of the other stuff that I had in mind. So I'm just gonna click on these, this metal grate, click on new material. I'm gonna name this metal, metal great probably spelling that wrong i don't care raise that metallic value and i'm just going to completely lower the roughness and then i'm going to go ahead and click every single material here now before i do that in solid mode i'm actually going to click on this little drop down up here click on random that way i can easily differentiate between all of my different pieces i'm going to start by clicking the first object holding shift click all of the other objects and then finally I'm going to click the one with the actual material last control L and then I'm going to select link materials. And now we're going to have all the correct materials. Looks like I missed a couple of pieces. I'm going to repeat the same process to get the same material on each piece. And then I'm going to hop back out right here. Okay. I'm also going to adjust the background to something a little bit darker. 
with a higher roughness just for right now and then we'll come back to this later so far this is looking awesome again this 3d model is just fantastic so i have no issues with it at all i think at this point let's start by deciding what kind of colors we want on this thing now the fan blades i'm going to come back to and i'm going to give them a nice scratched look using some fancy um, image textures and plugging those into roughness um, I'm thinking guys either yellow or blue for this so I'm just going to start out by creating a new uh, material for this bottom piece right here I'm going to choose glossy BSDF and then I'm just going to do maybe like a light blue and I'm going to kind of lower that roughness a bit and I'm going to hop back over here um, and I'm going to start off by just deciding which pieces I want to be what colors I'm thinking these three pieces can be the same color so I'm going to do the same process I did earlier I'm going to shift click that last piece link those materials and then i want a secondary color so i'm thinking for this back part that's kind of like the the motor casing i'll click on that and i'll also use this bottom piece to be the same color so let's go ahead and create a new color let's just see what yellow could look like yellow is not terrible we'll come back to that i'm just going to link these regardless so that they're the same and then for this little pin right here um, let me see. There's also a little holster piece. I'm thinking possibly white or black for these. So let's just go ahead and see what black could look like on this. Or maybe just a, a slightly metallic gray. That looks kind of nice. I'll link these for now and we'll come back to it. I'm also going to double check around the model and see if there's any smaller pieces like that. There is right here on the nose of the fan. The piece that actually holds the blades in the middle. I think I'm going to use those. Um, so let's go ahead back to rendered view. Let's copy that material over. And let's see what that looks like. That looks good. Also, the motor itself inside of here. I'm not sure what I'll do. I think I'll just make that black for now and we'll come back to it later. I'm also missing one piece. Now, you're not going to see this, but since I like to try to be detail oriented, I will give that a material. See how it's looking so far. Kind of cool. Not a huge fan of the color I chose. Let me just see what white might look like. The high roughness actually not sure that i'm going to go with a glossy i think i'm going to switch this back over to a principled and i'm going to try like a light blue kind of color maybe a dark blue let's just experiment with some colors here oh i kind of liked orange a little bit we can always come back to this later as well again this is not going to be the final material um this is just me kind of experimenting around part of me also wonders if we were to play with this background color a little bit more what we could achieve there all right, let's come back to that. I'm going to go to the fan blades. I'm going to create a new material, high metallic, maybe a 0.25 roughness, and I'm going to create the same material for each one of these. Again, I'm just selecting each fan blade, and I'm linking all those materials. And now that I look at this, I think I, want my, I might want the grate itself to actually be a darker kind of color with a higher roughness, kind of like that. And then the fan blades themselves will be that metallic material as well as that cylindrical shape in the middle. All right, I'm starting to like that a little bit more. Let me also go ahead and link these. Okay, I think I'm starting to like that a little bit more. Let's go ahead and play with this one back here. Again, I'm just adjusting the colors, guys, just to see what I think looks nice. And I kind of like that. I'm starting to kind of like that a little bit more. Maybe we do stick to a more neutral palette and then the actual color will come from the background itself. Again, we do have some light sources here. I'm gonna turn off the main light source so we just have the HDRI. I'm gonna go over to my color management in, under my render settings and I'm gonna bump that exposure up to 0.25. That looks a lot better. And we're gonna use high contrast. So we're gonna use medium high contrast for right now. I'm gonna bump the exposure up to 0.5. That way we can really see a little bit more brightness um, again, this is our HDRI. It's the only light source as of right now. I do want to go ahead and switch over my main light source, which is my uh, point light here. Again, the point light came with Blender's uh, default file. There it is right there. We're going to go ahead and select it, move it directly over our object, and I'm going to switch that over to an area light. And we're going to go ahead and reset every single setting to zero. I'm going to bring that up directly over our object, and I'm going to scale that up nice and big like that and then i'm going to set my power uh after we go into render view here so right now our power is at a thousand again this is before this is after so you can see the difference that lighting makes and i can't stress this enough when I'm, when you're creating renders 
lighting is so darn important it's not even funny now we're not using perspective view here so if we enable some depth of field it's going to look a little bit funky but i am going to go ahead and enable depth of field i love a really strong depth of field effect um, it's just something that i've always included in my renders right now we're at an f-stop of 2.8 now the distance that the camera is from the object is ultimately going to affect that as well right now we're at an orthographic scale and if we hop out into solid view here you'll notice our orthographic camera is quite close and right now we're at seven we're about seven and negative seven i'm going to bump that back to 15 and negative 15 and what you'll see is now our camera is much more distance from our object but we're going to have to kind of mess around with the scene a little bit more we're going to have to completely adjust our view i think i might go for a straight up 90 degree angle here and see what that looks like maybe sorry not a 90 maybe a 80 let's do 88 let's try that let's see how that looks right now so this is what we have right here i love the way this looks so far i think it's just so clean even just with the geometry that we have um, thus far let me go ahead and make sure my live streamers can see a little bit better um, I just love the way this is already coming out. I think it's fantastic. Uh, what I think I'm going to do next is I'm going to start to add some like particle effects and really mess with the materials. I'm not necessarily going for a realistic look here. I'm probably just going to go for something that I think looks fun um, and kind of exciting. So first off, off the bat, this back piece right here, I just want to just experiment with this color really quick. I In my head, I thought red might look kind of cool. Let's just see. Let me just see something here. Again, this is me experimenting with the colors. Um, I think maybe a red orange could be nice. Like a lower roughness, perhaps. And it doesn't look terrible, even if we raise that metallic value up. Nah. See, this is where I could spend hours trying to get the correct material, but to be honest with you guys, I don't want to spend too much time on it. I want to get into the other fun stuff. Uh, we have our depth of field enabled. Let me just go ahead and bump that down to one and just see what that looks like. As you can see, that's a much more dramatic effect on the depth of field. Um, we'll probably come back to that later. One thing I like to do is disable the object selection and manually adjust the depth of field myself in material preview mode. As you can see, I can really fine tune it here and I can decide where the focal point starts and stops. I'm going to use an f-stop of two, maybe three. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see what it looks like in rendered view. All right, I think that looks really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my plain background. We're going to head over to the shading tab now. I am going to give this a nice little grid floor texture. Now, I do have a grid floor texture that I created, but I want to show you guys how to create this from scratch. I'm just going to add in a brick texture node, plug that into the base color. Before I do that though, I'm going to copy this blue because I really like this blue and I'm going to paste it in for every slot. Now you're going to see when I plug that in that you're not going to see anything. And that's because we haven't decided our mortar color yet. I'm going to make our mortar color a little bit less bright. I'm going to bring that offset to zero. I'm also going to add in a mapping node and a texture coordinate node like this. I'm gonna plug in the generated to the vector, oops, generated to the vector and the vector into our vector here. Um, and we're gonna mess around with that in just a moment. I'm gonna click on texture here. I'm also going to make the scale a lot bigger like that. And then for our width, we're gonna want 0.2 and 0.2. Mortar size, we're gonna do 0.005 make it real nice and thin, and then we're gonna adjust our scale from there. Let's go ahead and pop into rendered view, just see what this looks like right now. So you can't really tell, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop out this menu, adjust our camera's kind of view here, make sure we're not cutting anything off. Now, this is where we can really play with the angle and the depth of field more. So right now, our depth of field is super strong. I'm gonna bump it up to eight. That looks really interesting. So we still get that nice depth of field look without breaking um, the illusion. So maybe back to five. That looks really nice. Um, I'm also going to mess around with the colors themselves. I'm gonna make this a little bit more of a darker blue. Again, I'm copying the color by just hovering over it and copying and pasting. And then what we can do is we can bring that grid floor back. Now, this is where it gets really interesting is where we mess with the mapping. Also the background itself, we could have this face the camera more and you can see how that changes the render, just the angle itself. I think I'm gonna go with something like maybe 45. Oops, 
maybe negative 45. We also don't want this to come out of view. So I might scale it on the, is it Y? Scale it on the Y, object, apply, scale. Up back in here. And now we can really adjust this however we see fit. I actually think that looks really nice. I think I'm gonna go with that. Again, our fan here is looking really nice. Um, we can pretty much do anything we want at this point. I'm not sure what I'll do with this back part here. I might keep it as black. I kind of like the orange. It's something that I would probably need to play with, but let's go ahead and hop back over to the layout real quick and see what we're working with. This looks really nice. I'm gonna turn off my overlays, just take a quick look at it. I think I'm ready to go ahead and jump into the texturing part of the fan blades. Again, we're not gonna be going into any other programs. We're gonna do everything completely in Blender. That's the way I like to do it. And I wanna show you guys kind of the cheap way to do this, pretty much for free. So what I'd like you guys to do, if you're interested in texturing, go over to unsplash.com. Just type in scratches. You can even type in, you can pretty much type in anything. You're looking for something kind of like this. This could probably work. We can mess around with that. Um, let's see what we have here. This is where you get to be really creative because you can pretty much use anything. You can even say rough texture. These are really nice too. I have a couple that I've already saved, so we're probably gonna use those. But what you would do is you would download something like this, all right? You would add in your image texture right here. I'm gonna just click on open. I'm gonna to go to my downloads and I'm gonna find the image I'm talking about. I have a lot in here to search through. Okay, here's a good one. This one has a nice fingerprint on it, but if we scroll down a little bit further here, we should have some roughness maps. Well, they're not roughness, really roughness maps, but I'm gonna be using them as roughness maps. Let's go ahead and scroll through. Here we go. All right, there's a leather one. Here's some scratchy ones. All right, just searching through here, guys. Thank you for your patience you know what we're gonna go with one from unsplash actually because i'm not finding what i'm looking for here let's download the original one that i showed you guys how about this one this one looks really nice let me just double check that there's nothing else this is kind of a brushed metal let's just see what it looks like i'm gonna go ahead and download it all right now it's in our downloads i'm gonna x out of this reload my um image file opener okay we're gonna go ahead and select that image. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure, and I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can really see this. I'm gonna click on, instead of sRGB, I'm gonna do non-color, super important. I'm gonna add in a color ramp, plug in my color to my FAC, and then this is the magic part. We're gonna plug in our color into our roughness. Now, right away, you're not gonna to notice too much, but you will see Already, we have a nice scratchy surface, but there's a couple of other things we're gonna have to do. One of those things is mess around with our color ramp. We can decide how intense we want this kind of effect to be. Again, I am gonna pop into rendered view for this, and I'm gonna make sure my camera angle is set up so I can see what this is actually gonna look like. You'll notice as I adjust these sliders, you can completely change the way this thing's gonna look. Now, another thing I will mention is that we don't have any mapping yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. I'm gonna click on search and I'm gonna search for texture coordinate. And then of course, we're gonna search for our mapping node. Um, for those of you on the live stream, I hope you guys can see this. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my generated to our vector and then I'm just gonna plug in my vector into my vector. Now, as you can see, it looks a little bit nicer. You can see that it's a little bit more like spaced out in a way that makes more sense for our scene. And this is where you can adjust the scale of your texture as well as this color ramp right here. Now, right now our metallic is bumped all the way up and our roughness is only being decided by our, um, our color ramp here and of course the image texture itself. So this is the way it looks right now. Um, you can also add an invert node or you, if you want, or you can just switch these sliders around and you'll notice you're gonna, you're gonna get some different effects depending on what you do. I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this in a way that I think makes sense. And I'm also gonna mess with the scale. Right now the scale is set to one. I'm just gonna try three for all values. You can see that that doesn't quite look right. I'm gonna try maybe 0.4 for each value. You can see that that also doesn't look right. I'm also gonna set this up to be a texture. And you can see you can rotate it. As I rotate this, you can see how it completely changes. I actually don't think that looks too terrible. This is another part where you can adjust the color of your actual fan blades. Yep, that looks good. Um, and then you're gonna wanna double check this. Let's see what else we can do here. 
you can set this to flat. That's typically what you would want. Of course, if you were on a spherical object, you would choose sphere. Now, what's really nice about this setup is we can just copy our nodes over into the next material. So if I wanted this, these rings right here to have a scratchy material, I would just simply copy these nodes right here, click on my other material, paste them in, swap out the image texture, and I'll just swap it out with something else from my downloads, perhaps, or I could just use the exact same one. I'll scroll through real quick. This one's pretty nice. I'll just bump that in there. I'll plug that into our roughness. And as you can see, we have some texture already. And the best part is we can completely adjust it however we'd like with the slider and with the scaling. So if you really, really zoom in here and I zoom into our, um, let me just really, really zoom in. You guys can see now everything is nicely textured. Now, of course, this is going to take some, uh, some adjusting. Like you guys need to adjust this the way that you want it. Like I can't, I can't tell you if this is perfect for your project or mine right now. I like the way this looks. I'm definitely going to bump up that color. And then of course, our middle of our fan blade right here, this orange piece, we can do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna paste in those nodes. And then I'm just gonna plug the color into our roughness. And as you can see, if we zoom in real close here, that has some texture to it right now. Again, it's really that simple. Um, you guys are more than welcome to experiment with this however you like. I think this looks really cool, but you do have to be careful because like I said right here, this texture doesn't really work for this part. Like I don't really like that. So I might adjust the scale to 0.5 and just see what that looks like. And I might lower the intensity of it, right? And this is where it comes down to personal preference as well. I think this looks really nice already though. Um, and I think I'm actually going to adjust the color a little bit more, maybe make it a little bit darker. I just see what that might look like. This is where you can really get into some fancy stuff. Now the orange back here should have the same texture. Again, you can adjust how you want that to look with these sliders. It's gonna be very subtle and hard to tell from a distance. But so far, I think this is looking pretty darn cool and I'm really happy with the way this render is turning out. So what I'd like to do next is I'd like to maybe animate it and actually kind of render out some frames with this. This is looking pretty cool. Again, you guys can totally experiment with this. I'm not like perfectly happy with it, but you guys can see that as we adjust it, you can get completely different result depending on what you're going for. I could even potentially make this like a really light blue. It doesn't quite look right with this. You could try to make this gold or orange. Let's see what, actually, let's see what like a nice copper color could look like. That's not quite right. You have to be careful too, because when you adjust the color, depending on the reflection of the actual um, material itself on the bottom, like the actual plane, you're gonna get a completely different result. This actually kind of looks pretty interesting. Let me see what happens if we copy that over. Not quite, not quite what I was looking for. This one though, I'm thinking maybe just a slightly more yellow color. This is where you can really get into some fun stuff though. And I actually kind of think this looks pretty interesting. Um, again, totally up to you guys what you wanna do. Um, the other part of it is lighting. Like I said, right now we're in an HDRI environment. I'm probably gonna go ahead and scale this a little bit so that the background doesn't get too cut off. And this is, I'm scaling the background plane. This looks pretty cool. Um, as you can tell though, with the grid floor, you do have to be careful right now it's blue. So it's gonna reflect and make our copper look green, which is why I can't stress enough lighting and things like that. But if I was to reset these to like this, hold on. Again, this is me completely resetting the entire thing. I've just completely changed my mind about what I wanted, but now look at the drastic difference. It's, it's pretty interesting to experiment with. Um, again, our mortar size, we can bump that down a little bit. See how drastically different you can make something just by changing up the materials, the lighting. I mean, look at that. That's a completely different render. Um, and I know you guys are probably thinking, well, Kenny, um, obviously it's different materials, but really you don't think about how much your environment is going to affect your render until you start messing with these things. I actually kind of like the direction this is headed. I really like this. I think I know what I'm gonna do now. I think I'm gonna make this completely black. Yeah, I think that looks really cool. And I'm just gonna go into my roughness map, mess around with that a bit. I think I'm gonna flip this a little bit. Yeah, that looks, that looks kind of more like what I was looking for. I'm also gonna adjust 
my color ramp for my fan blades. I'm going to go ahead and bring this black slider up. That is more what I was looking for. This is cool. Now let me just fine tune this color. I think I want to go for kind of like a, almost like a burnt copper kind of color. Maybe not too saturated. Now, another thing we can get into here is we can take this kind of copper color and we can actually add some uh, variation in the color itself. Um, that would get into some more node stuff, but this looks really cool. I think I'm gonna mess around with this and actually animate this. This this looks really, really fun. I really like the way this is turning out and this is just, this model is great. So shout out to the Happy Toolbox. This is not sponsored in any way. I genuinely, they reached out to me and said, hey, we really want you to create some renders with our stuff. And that's what I did. They're not paying me to do this. I'm just having fun right now. So that's another uh, great thing to point out there. So. This looks good. We have some depth of field. We have our fan. I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to see what I can do about animating these fan blades. This is where it's going to get kind of interesting because all these fan blades are completely separate. Um, and I'm not sure what is the deal with the origin. So let me just go ahead and just try and rotate this guy. All right, that's a good sign. So right now our, um, on our Y axis, this, this guy is... This guy might be able to be our parent. So let me just see what happens if I parent all of these to this middle kind of button piece. Control P is going to be the shortcut for that. All right, so we're going to do parent keep transform. Let me just see what happens if I rotate this. Look at that. And that's how you know that you're getting good digital assets. I don't have to do anything now. All I have to do is rotate the center piece and I know I'm gonna have my fan blades rotating. This is perfect, this is all I needed. Let's go ahead and decide how long we want this render to last. I'm thinking 30 seconds because we can loop this very easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my time, my timeline to 30 seconds. I am going to insert a keyframe for the rotation of this middle button. I'm just gonna hover over the rotation right here, hit I. Now I have my keyframe, go to frame 30, and let's just make this rotate which way would it go? It'd be going this way. So we'll go a full 360. Now, one of the keys to making this loop actually work, let me just go ahead and play this back. One, we don't want this to happen. So we're gonna adjust this to linear, right? So we are gonna adjust our rotation to linear. That's one thing we're gonna do. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take one of these two keyframes and push it back a frame. This will make more sense like when you render it out, but you don't actually want the end frame and the first frame to be the same. You actually don't want that. You actually want them to flow seamlessly. So now if we press play, let me go ahead and zoom out here so we can see this. If we press play, you'll see it's a complete seamless loop. And what's great is we can enable motion blur, but we don't have to. Now, I don't really want to stop right there. I actually want to add, I want to see if I can add those little pieces that kind of flow in the wind that come off of the fan or maybe just a particle effect here. The only thing I am noticing right now that I'm not perfectly happy with is I don't know if I want this piece to be um, this color. I wanna actually see what this would look like. We'll come back to that later. Um, again, this is kind of just a big experiment figuring out what works best for us. This looks pretty cool. If we go ahead and press play, we can see our fan is spinning very easily. We just animated that. Um, I am curious though, real quick with render settings. Right now we're at a hunt, we're at 300 uh, samples. I'm gonna bump that down to 50, and I'm gonna show you guys a super cool trick that I don't go over in a lot of my videos. I use this all the time for client projects. If you just go ahead and bump up your resolution to like 200 to 300 percent, you can get away with much less samples here. Uh, again, I'm gonna go for 50 samples, optics denoising. We're using our GPU. Um, I am gonna enable motion blur because I wanna see what it's gonna look like. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit render. Let's just see what, what this looks like at the current moment. It looks like it's gonna take about less than 30 seconds for the render, which is fantastic. Again, we could probably get away with less samples. So far, this is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and wait for this to complete. Um, as you can see, our fan blades are in motion, and I actually think the motion blur looks pretty good. I might, I might stick with that motion blur. And just like that, we have our almost 4K render done in 20 seconds. Again, the reason we're able to achieve this time with our render is because I bumped up the resolution to two times what it was before, and I went ahead and lowered the samples. Uh, believe it or not, this works. Um, people are probably gonna say, no, it would never work, this and that. Now, as you can see, if we zoom in, you're gonna see some noise in here. However, however, 
if you bump that up to maybe 150, 200, you're probably still get a really good render time and a fantastic render. This looks really good. Um, I'm really, really happy with this. The only other thing I can think of, I'm actually not feeling the grid background as much. I think I might go ahead and mess around with that a little bit more. I'm also gonna mess around with, with the lighting. Again, this was a 20 second render. Um, and it looks really good. It's huge. It's a huge render and we can do a lot with it. We can crop it into different sizes. Let me go ahead and take our light and let me scale this down on the X axis. A little bit of a thinner light. See what that looks like. It looks really nice. Again, this is without the light. This is with the light. Now what's really interesting, if we take our light and just roll it along the X axis, notice the difference from here, right? to here. The positioning of the light itself is just so important. I like where it currently is right now. I'm fine with that. Let me go to my top down view. You can see that our light is pretty much lined up with our object in terms of like how it's aligned. So everything is looking pretty good there. Um, the only thing I'm having an issue with is the actual background itself. So let me go ahead and pop back over here. I think I'm going to lower the brightness of some of these things. Just a slightly duller color here. I think that looks pretty nice. Again, I'm going to go ahead and take my camera. I'm going to mess around with this angle a little bit. I think that looks pretty nice. I'm also just curious what it would look like if it was straight on like that. Let me actually genuinely try to line this up with the fan because I don't know why I didn't do that before. This is my background plane is selected. All right, so this is like, should be almost perfectly lined up now. And let's see what it's actually supposed to look like. I've been messing with the grid too much. I think this looks pretty nice though. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out so far. Again, if we press play, we have our render here. And it's nice that I didn't have to do anything crazy with those fan blades. They're just rotating really nicely right now. The only other thing I might add is just a little bit of something rolling forward, like those little um, those little pieces of paper. Um, and I do kind of want to mess with the depth of field just a little bit more. We're at a we're at a uh, five f stop. Now I'm at three. This just looks really nice. Um, and I do want to show you guys one more thing. If we swap out our HDRI right now for something else, I think we're on this one right now. Completely different result, right? Again cannot stress lighting enough. I actually get almost angry that people don't take lighting into consideration more. Lighting can quite literally make or break your render. This looks pretty pretty nice. Let me let me try an outdoorsy one, see what that could look like. Again, completely different render, different lighting, right? Same object, same like area light. This is a studio lighting setup. See like I don't personally like that. I don't think there's enough light on the object. Now, one of the reasons I'm using an HDRI is because we have those reflective parts on our model. See, that looks pretty nice, but notice how um, the lighting itself can drastically change your render. Now, one, one more thing I'll mention about the HDRI. I'm going to switch over to my shading workspace over here. I'm going to add in a texture coordinate and show you how we can easily adjust our positioning of our HDRI with just a mapping node, a texture coordinate node, and that's it. So as you can see, nothing really changed. But this Z value, if I go ahead and let me get out of this, if I go ahead and adjust that Z value, notice how our background is now moving around. Now the key here, go into your camera view, now start moving that around. Now look at how the model is changing as I move my HDRI around. See, you can decide exactly how you want this to look. I actually think that looks perfect. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it right there. But I could sit there for hours, and I'm not even kidding you, hours, and try to get that correct. Just because it's so, to me, it's so important to actually have the perfect lighting or just lighting that you know looks good and you're proud of, you're happy with. Let me swap out the HDRI one last time, try one more, and then if this doesn't work, we'll go back to our original HDRI. How about power, power plant, powder plant, whatever it's called. Again, adjusting my Z rotation. Ooh, I kind of like that. There's only one more thing I'll, I'll add. I, I keep adding more things, but these are just tips and tricks. Um, on one of the sides, you can add a plane as a reflector panel. Um, and I've done this before in real life with photography. It works great. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and put this off to this side. 
snap to my camera. Now, right now you can't see that plane. Let me just bring it into camera view so you can see it a little bit. All right, now we're gonna pop it out. Now I'm gonna scale it up real big. This is the difference before and after. You can't really notice it, but if you look right here, you can kind of notice the reflector plane. I'm gonna bring it to the other side. I wanna show you the difference. Scaling that up again. Now here's without it, here's with it, right? You can really change the way that render looks. I don't know that it's helping or hurting. You can also change the rotation of it as well. See how now I have a little bit more of like a highlight right here. If I turn that off, you don't have that. Now, you don't have to put this on the side. You can also put it directly above your object like this. Let me just make sure this is directly above. Yep, it is. So here's, excuse me, uh, here's without, right? And with, again, subtle difference, but if you look really closely, you'll notice how those certain shadows will fill in. So I'm actually not gonna use the reflector. I don't think it's helping too much, but it's something that you can experiment with. And to be honest, um, I'm just gonna try one more. Sorry, guys. Go ahead and pop this into a 90 here, GX, to move it on the X-axis. Make sure it's moved out of the way. Again, here's, here's a good, okay, this is a better example. Right here, this area right here in the fan blade, if I turn the reflector off, you'll notice it's black, and that's because it's reflecting the environment. I'm gonna scale this up even more. I'm gonna also make sure it's not blocking our camera's view. Look at the difference. This is with the reflector, without. Again, you don't have to do this, but you can if you want to. This is looking pretty good though. I'm pretty happy with this so far. I don't know that I'll add much more to it. I think I wanted to add those little like squiggly things that come off the fan, but to be honest, the more I look at it, the more I'm kind of just happy with it. The only other thing I can think of is maybe add a few like fun elements in the background or just change the background in general. This is without our background plane, by the way. This is just a plain fan. It looks cool. Um, I do want to experiment with the colors of the background just a little bit more and see what they might look like if they're lighter. This is like a lighter look. I kind of don't mind it. I actually don't mind that. See, this is why I can never finish a project because there's quite literally too many things that you could do. Mortar size, I'm going to bump that up a little bit. See, I don't like that. See, that's why I'm going to go back. This is really fun. It's just fun to mess around with these things, especially because this model is really just a cool 3D model. What do you guys think? I think it looks cool. I could call it quits here. I could keep working on it. This is kind of one of those types of renders where I could probably just mess around with this for hours and not have a completed product, which is pretty dangerous. Um, you don't want to spend too much time on a project, but this, this is looking pretty cool. Um, I think I might just render this out, see how it looks. Again, it's just a fun little loop. Um, you could even make this less frames if you wanted to. In fact, you could probably make it a fourth of what it is now if you just do a fourth of the rotation. Again, it's all about timing and making sure you have everything set up correctly. Let's render out a quick frame. I actually want to bump up my motion blur to like a shutter of two and just see what that looks like. And I think I'm actually going to go for 25 samples here because I think it might still be a good render. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh, here we go. All right, here's that motion blur coming in. This is gonna look really nice. Now, this might be too much motion blur. Again, we did a lot of work on the texturing for the fan blades, but if you take a look, once this render is complete, you can't really tell. And look, there's a lot of noise, which is why you don't wanna go for too few samples. But I also kind of like it in a way. In, in a weird way, I kind of like the way that that looks. Yeah, um, that <laughs> looks pretty cool. I kind of want to do one last thing though before, or well, first of all, let's bump the samples back up to like 100. Um, shutter, two, two for the shutter looks good. I want to mess with this material for the plane a little bit more. This is a lower roughness. I kind of don't mind it. And I actually want to back away from the fan just a little bit, create a little bit more space here. Do I want the rule of thirds? I don't know. I don't know that I do. I want it to be like almost slightly off center. Like that, right? But a part of me also just wants to center it the best that I can. 
And I kind of am enjoying the way that this looks like a really nice like tile floor right now. This looks pretty nice. Let me copy that. And then let me adjust the scale of our tiles here. I mean, I kind of like the way this looks. I actually have one thing I'm going to change. Again, <laughs> one more thing I'm going to change. This is the life of a 3D artist. You just are constantly trying different things. I'm going to add a new plane. I'm going to just hide this one for a second. I'm going to apply my scale. Pop back into rendered view. I'm going to give this my, um, the material I made earlier, the grid floor material. I'm going to raise my roughness. I'm actually going to lower my roughness just a little bit. And then watch this. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this plane. RY90 to uh, rotate that. I'm going to scale it up really big in the background. I am going to just give this a white material like this. Now you can see that the background seamlessly blends in. Again, look at how far this has come. Just it's, it's, it's insanity that, that I'm not done this yet. I'm gonna mess around with the roughness just a little bit. See, I want that reflection there, but I don't want too much. And then also the actual mortar itself, I'm gonna raise that. Now here's a cool trick I'm gonna show you guys. You probably already know this trick if you know anything about Blender, but I'm actually gonna give the, um, the material itself like ridges, like so I'm gonna zoom into the grid floor texture here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and adjust the, I'm gonna plug this into the bump. All right, hold on, I'm gonna add a bump node. And I am going to plug in my color into, I believe, the height, and then the normal into the normal. Yep, now we have that. And then all we have to do, it's kind of hard to see, is we're going to go ahead and mess with the smooth. We have to make that one, and then we can kind of adjust from there. Um, and then where's the other thing? Mortar size. Yeah, we can mess with the mortar size. Um, let's go ahead and just see what that looks like. It's kind of hard to tell, but there are actual noticeable ridges now that actually have dimension to them. So that, that's a little little trick um, that you can use. And then if you want, you can also adjust the scale a little bit more, maybe like a bigger scale, smaller scale. That might be nice. And you can just do what I do and just spend way too much time on this to the point where you'll never complete your project. And then for the background, I might even just really quickly see what this would look like as a, an emissive material. <laughs> Way too much. But again, experiment around, guys. Have fun with it. Um, I do want to show you one last thing, even though I said I was done. See how if I change the background color, we can ha still have that nice fade in because of the depth of field. So if I wanted to, I could make my accent color be like a nice gold, right? Or a nice like burnt, like orange possibly. And the, and the reason we're getting that gradient is because of the depth of field. So there's just a lot of really fun tricks we can use and a lot of great ways to not finish our project because we can't decide on what we want. Notice how if I make the background black and I turn off my overlays, now we still have that faded look. Um, and that looks nice too. There, there's really just the, the lighting, like I could talk about lighting for an entire hour, um, just, just messing around with the different ways we can do things. That has a nice feel to it because we have like a nice gradient. But again, artwork is never finished. As you guys know, if you've ever been to art school, they always say your artwork is never done. I could work on this for a whole nother hour. I have no idea how long we've even been working on this for, but I just think it looks fantastic. And I'm really happy with the way this came out. The only other thing I'll probably do is just mess around with the light position a little bit more. Right now I have my area light selected. You can see that if I move my area light, it just completely changes the way this looks, right? This is more of a front angle. This is like an overhead angle here. And this is like more of a backside angle. I kind of liked where we were in the beginning, maybe just slightly less. Again, look at, look at the difference. Look at the difference. Or turn the light off altogether and you're just using your HDRI lighting. But I personally like this. I'm also going to scale it on the X just a little bit. Oh, I have my overlays turned off. There we go. All right, that's a little bit wider of a light. And I think that looks nice. I think I'm going to call it on that. I'm not adding anything else. If I did, it would just be some kind of video overlay. So let's go ahead and play this back. You're not going to get the motion blur right now, but we do have a nice, subtle fan animation. Um, again, the animating part, 
took the least amount of time. The, the most amount of time was me deciding what kind of colors I wanted to use, what kind of lighting. Um, let's go ahead and render this at 300 samples and just see what we get. Um, and then if we need to, we can bump it back down to save on render time. Overall, this full render shouldn't take more than 20 minutes. Um, right now it's saying about three minutes for this render. It will jump down in just a moment here. So let's go ahead and give this a second. <clears throat> and you can see already the quality is better. Um, and really when you enable that depth of field, you're really getting the next level up. Um, in my opinion, I don't know why you wouldn't use depth of field. The only reason I wouldn't is if I had such a wide angle shot that I'm not very close to an object, but this, this looks really nice. Look at this. And then we zoom in on the actual fan itself. And once, once that denoiser kicks in, oh buddy, that's going to look good. We have about a minute left on this, but I don't think it'll take that long. It always doesn't take as long as it says it's going to take. Um, but look at that. I just can't wait to see what that top half of the render is going to look like. It already looks so good. And again, when we're using HDRIs, we're really going to have those metallic areas really pop because in real life, the only reason we know it's metallic is because it's reflecting the environment around it, right? If you had a completely white room, it might be a little bit harder to tell if something was metallic because there's no contrast. But if you look in here, all these lines you get are from the environment, right? Even including the floor itself. And then look at this. If you look really closely, these lines are coming from our grid floor, right? You wouldn't have that if you didn't have a metallic surface with a low roughness. Um, Kind of common sense but also like something you might not think about when you're creating your 3d renders so getting this to look copper is is almost as much about the material as it is about the lighting all right that was about a minute 40 so that took a little bit longer than i had wanted it to um but it does look nice i think i could get away with less samples but again go ahead and zoom in here and you'll notice we have some really noisy areas so there's a lot to think about when it comes to actually rendering. I could probably do an entire segment on just rendering itself um, and how important it is to mess around and experiment. You have to experiment in Blender um, to get the result you're looking for. Let me go ahead and save this to my downloads so I have this. I'm going to call it Copper Fan. Funny thing is, I'm not the fastest typer. I'm really not that fast in Blender either compared to the pros, but... I have a lot of fun with this kind of stuff. This looks really nice. And what I'll probably do is I'll set up a second camera for the YouTube thumbnail as well. I can go through how I do that. Um, just because a lot of people want to know the full process. So I'm showing you this is the full process. There's no editing. I don't edit my videos on purpose because I want you guys to see the struggle. I want you to see what I go through, um, what, how I experiment. This is... Remember where I was earlier, I had a completely different background, completely different set of colors for the fan, and now this is where we're, we're at right now. And I couldn't be happier. I think this turned out fantastic. And as soon as I'm done that render, I'll pull it into Premiere. I'll pull all the frames in. Um, sorry, the, the one uh, 30 frame video, and then I'll just loop it back and forth, and it'll just look fantastic. Um, again, pro tip, adjust your depth of field in Material Preview. You'll get an instant um, change and you'll see instantly where your depth of field is actually falling. Um, that's a little pro tip there. And then don't forget to adjust your lighting. Experiment with lighting. Don't just add an area light and call it a day. Add your HDRI. Add other area lights. Add some rim lighting. I mean, there's just literally so many things you can do. But thank goodness this model was already made for me because Lord knows I wouldn't feel like creating something like this. All right, guys, let's go ahead and do one more tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and stop my video on OBS. If you're on YouTube watching, thank you so much. I appreciate your time, and I hope you got some value out of this video. I know I haven't posted in a while, but again, I've just been super busy. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Um, more videos to come soon. In the meantime, make sure you check out all of my stuff on Blender Market, Gumroad, um, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, of course, and then where else am I at? I think that's, those are my main platforms. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video on OBS. YouTube, have a great day. And Instagram, stay tuned for our next video.